Hi GemFit viewers, thanks for joining me again. So I was, um, in the last video, I talked about um, anti-inflammatory diseases and we talked a little bit about all the raised antibodies that we have. And I promised you I would talk to you about the foods and how we're gonna avoid getting raised antibodies and then subsequently avoid these conditions and these illnesses. So the first thing, it is actually a five uh, step process, okay? And there's five main things that we can do based on food, either incorporating food or avoiding certain foods, which will support in ensuring that these antibodies are not raised. Now, this is the first one and it's the most difficult one of all of it. And it actually, it is to avoid wheat, okay? So there is a lot of research out there about about human consumption of wheat and whether actually it is beneficial for us or whether actually it is, is it beneficial for every, anyone regardless of whether you have celiac disease which means that you are you you can't digest wheat whether you are um, wheat intolerant or whether you're just somebody who hasn't got any raised antibodies to eat but you still do tend to eat it so this is difficult so the first thing that we can do is actually to eliminate all wheat now you're probably thinking that is going to be really, really tough because you go out and it's everywhere, okay? It's in breads, it's in gravies, it's in soups, and it's used as a filler in so many things. But you need to become consciously aware that the wheat is in that product and trying to, if not eliminate, just to try and avoid it and try to reduce and think about other foods that we can eat to avoid wheat. The other thing is to actually reduce your dairy. So dairy is another thing which actually causes inflammation. Okay, so these foods generally cause inflammation for most people. The last thing we have is sugar. So sugar also causes inflammation. And actually, if you've got inflammation, or even if you don't have inflammation, it's like you're putting fuel onto the fire. You've got this burning body, you've got this inflammation all around your body, and you keep putting fuel onto that fire, and then it gets more and more and more aggravated. So that is the first thing that we want to do. And I would say to you, I know it's a difficult task to eliminate wheat, dairy, and sugar, but to look at alternatives that you can have to try and reduce your load, is to you reduce your load of those foods. The second thing is to increase and to support the permeability of our guts. So how are we going to do that? We're going to try and have different amounts of fibrous vegetables. Now, root vegetables are the way to go with this. So root vegetables is anything which is grown in the ground. So that could be parsnips, sweets, sweet potatoes, uh, turnips. And what I would suggest, you go to the supermarket and you buy a couple of each so that you can vary it. So you're not having the same foods on a regular basis because actually all of those root vegetables have different qualities and you want them to stay in the gut you want the fiber in your gut because when we've talked about probiotics and prebiotics before the probiotics will feed off that okay and they will help to uh, produce what we call short chain fatty acids a butyrate which is actually the energy production and they produce energy and for the body and it's like if you've got a lot of butyrate and you're producing a lot of butyrate it's like having a ha your house is made out of brick compared to a lack of butyrate and your house is made out of straw so that's your second thing that i'd like you to do the third thing is this is going to sound really really crazy it's the easy easiest thing to do but if you do it it helps that also build build your gut integrity so this is um, stewed apples so how easy is that to do? So stewed apples, you want to put the apples in with some water and leave the skin on. Okay, I'd want you to get organic apples. And then once the skin is a bit shiny, then what you, you know that, that is those apples are ready. You put those in a jar, keep them in the fridge and you have two tablespoons every day. That will help to heal, heal your gut. And that's really, really going to be beneficial. The third, sorry, fourth thing we're on is bone broth. So bone broth, um, you might have heard of it now, it is becoming quite popular. So bone broth is when you get the carcass of any bones, that could be fish, that could be chicken, that could be beef, that could be whichever bones that you want, okay? And you need to uh, put that into a slow cooker or into a pan. You cover it with water, add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and then any vegetables that you want and you let that simmer 
on a really, really, really low heat. So if it's in a slow cooker, the lowest heat that you can possibly get. And you, you just leave that and you leave that for up to 16 hours, between 12 and 16 hours. What I do is I make my bone broth and then I actually put that into jars and then I freeze it and then I bring it out every single day and we have um, a cup a day. And that will really, really help again to heal the gut. The final thing is I talked to you about probiotics in terms of fermented vegetables. Now, fermented vegetables, I want you to have a variety of those. We've talked about kimchi, and I told you that we make kimchi at home. We talked about sauerkraut, which is another fermented vegetable. Also, um, you could have kefir. Uh, kefir, you can buy in a lot of supermarkets, okay? And that is also a probiotic. And I want you to have a variety of those things and have like a couple of spoons a day with, with your meals. That is probably the five step plan that you can go by that will help to heal your gut, improve the gut integrity, and also stop this inflammation from developing in your body. So until next time, when I'm going, I'll talk about supplements that we can have also to support this and reduce and eliminate the inflammation. Until then, GemFit viewers, see you again. Bye.